Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to start a series of videos with deer resistant plants. And I'm actually going to do them as groups, uh, meaning that I'm standing in a Pieris japonica right now. Uh, this variety happens to be mountain snow. I'm not going to touch on the fact that it's necessarily mountain snow. I'm going to talk more broadly that uh, Pieris japonica happens to be deer resistant. And if you want to get um, an individual variety, um, I have playlists on my channel for these different groups of plants. And so if you, um, uh, we're going to talk about Loripetalum uh, in one of these videos. And Loripetalum, there are varieties that get from, that get three feet tall and there are varieties that get 20 feet tall. And so if you will go to my playlist called Loripetalum on my channel, you can look for an individual variety. So if Loripetalum is something that sounds interesting to you after, the de after watching this deer resistant video, you can more, you can refine that more and find the one that fits the space that you want to put it in hope that makes sense. Second thing, uh, um, unfortunately the deer don't read the deer resistant list and there'll almost certainly be something in these videos that uh, somebody watching's deer has eaten. Okay, deer, um, a desperate deer will probably eat almost anything. So these are going to be the kind of tried and true things that I know of to be deer resistant, but deer resistant does not mean deer proof and so just keep that in mind. Also, rabbits don't read the deer resistant list and rabbits have an, their own uh, group of plants that they're that they don't eat and do eat and they will eat a lot of the things that appear on the um, uh, on the deer resistant list mahonia being one of them for whatever reason and that's probably true with other animals as well that just you know you know something that's not appetizing for a deer may be appetizing to a rabbit okay again the very first plant in this series this is uh, Pieris japonica. This variety happens to be mountain snow, but again, um, there you know this is going to be true of all um, Japanese Pieris that uh, they are deer resistant. Great plant for part shade conditions. Super super cold hardy. A lot of the things that are going to be in these first couple videos are not because I'm shooting this video down in South Alabama. But as I continue to add to this list, I will add things that are more cold hardy. But Pieris japonica happens to be uh, very cold hardy, and in fact, I'm probably too far south to be growing. Um, to be growing this plant well in the ground, actually. So let's get started on uh, plant number two. So forgive the wind in this video. Uh, I've come to South Alabama. I'm in a very, very large open space and there would definitely be some breeze out here. Like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, this is deer resistant plants. Um, deer, you know, get hungry enough. I would imagine they'll eat uh, anything that they had to to survive. And these are just plants that are low uh, on their list. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, these two new uh, gardenia varieties from the Southern Living Plant Collection. This is foolproof gardenia, uh, and uh, this is a diamond spire next to it. Uh, they're prepared to winterize here. You're gonna see this throughout this video. Um, it's just covers in the middle of the aisles, so just in case they need to cover if it gets too cold. But that's what that's all about. Uh, foolproof gets like three to four feet in height, and uh, diamond spire is more upright and uh, narrow. Uh, interesting new. Uh, introduction never seen a gardenia like it uh, really but this isn't about these particular varieties it's just gardenias in general uh, are very very deer resistant so i stopped at these elysium this is a newly planted crop i just don't know if i'm going to find any larger than this in the nursery today so uh, we'll go with these um, uh, sunshine uh, florida sunshine elysium is one that i've shown many times on the channel is a gold foliage version of this. There are Elysium that are native to the southeast and there's Elysium that are actually native to other parts of the world uh, as well and then there's some crosses. Uh, but all of them are pretty much deer proof. If you break the uh, leaves open on uh, Elysium it smells like licorice. Great choice. That Florida Sunshine Elysium will brighten up any kind of dark space uh, that you want to put it in. Uh, most of these are hardy up into zone 6. Um, zone 6 kind of protected. Zone 7 uh, very hardy. Uh, most of them will make great screening plants or, you know, if you have a tall uh, or a high spot on your foundation, you want something taller on. Really good choice. They bloom uh, when it's cool outside, and so they bloom when other things are not flowering. So the next thing I'll show you is uh, Clayera. This is Leanne Clayera. I've got a video on my channel for this one. has incredible bronze new foliage on it. This is just a fantastic, just a fantastic plant. Uh, I've got um, a video coming on a uh, Bigfoot uh, Clara, uh, which I don't think I've done one on yet. And then I've showed uh, shown Juliet and uh, 
Romeo, which are variegated versions of this. These are really going to be screening plants, uh, but great choices if you have deer issues. Uh, they're a, uh, de definitely on most uh, deer resistant list. So here we have a screening plant uh, that's very, very deer resistant. Uh, this is a Carolina Sapphire, uh, Arizona Cypress. And these have been uh, cone shaped, uh, look great at retail like this, but of course they get big, big, big. And uh, you know, like I say, it's a great screening plant, super, super drought resistant, very, very deer resistant. Uh, the uh, the uh, foliage on it is very aromatic and I can actually smell them just standing here. I don't even have to rub the uh, foliage to smell it. Um, but it's a, a great, great choice if you have deer and you're trying to uh, create a barrier between you and a neighbor. So I found a group of uh, Vitex and uh, Vitex is a uh, beautiful, small, really kind of an ornamental tree um, if, I had to, if I had to give it a name. You can keep them smaller and keep them kind of shrub sized, but really most Vitex are going to want to grow into small ornamental trees, let's say 10 to 15 feet in height, something like that. Kind of have cr uh, crepe myrtle type growth on them but they're considered extremely deer resistant, very long bloomed, and they're blooming even now. It's almost November. You can see, you know, flower spike here on the top of this one, kind of uh, very, like I say, very, very long bloom. Pollinators love it. And so it has a ton of attributes. If you have a situation where you have deer issues and you're trying to create a pollinator garden, uh, Vitex is definitely should be uh, near the top of your list. I found a group of uh, kaleidoscope abelia and pretty much uh, abelia across the board are going to be uh, deer resistant. There's lots of variegated ones that I've shown, kaleidoscope and miss lemon and radiance um, and then there's green uh, older varieties and and newer varieties and compact ones like Rose Creek but abelia are going to be a good choice for you for and you know they're evergreen good for pollinators. Uh, the variegated ones are certainly colorful. They bloom most of the summer and uh, then they also have uh, deer resistance as well and drought tolerance. So I've kind of got mixed emotions uh, showing this plant uh, in this list because it is also uh, considered uh, invasive in a lot of areas. This is Eliagnus pungens, great screening plant. I mean, I can't take anything away from this plant's ability to make your neighbor go away really quickly. And it's salt proof, deer proof, rabbit proof, every kind of proof there is. Um, this plant will out survive humans uh, almost certainly. Um, it, like I say, it does come up, it does seed itself and comes up on its own. It's almost too late. It's probably something we should probably just consider uh, a native plant uh, at this point. I mean, you not planting it is probably not going to change the fact that it's, uh, you know, already, a, you know, already naturalized uh, in the environment. But I am showing it because this is a uh, deer resistant plant list and not a, uh, an invasive uh, plant list. And it's super fast growing. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just an industrial plant uh, to use as a screening plant. So 99% of what I try to do on this channel is show you things or talk about things from my own personal experience. I don't like to uh, you know, read blog posts uh, to figure out what's, you know, what's what. But uh, this is Distillium and it's on most people's deer resistant list. Um, I just don't have any experience with it. Uh, the Distillium craze has just started here in the last you know, 10 to 15 years and uh, there's new ones constantly you guys have seen me plant jewel box and cast in bronze at my house they're great evergreen shrubs they're in the witch hazel family and laura petalum is also in the witch hazel family and it's very deer resistant so i'm assuming it is um, but i just don't have any personal experience with it if i'm wrong about this one and your distillium have been sampled by deer please put it in the uh, bottom of the video and let uh, other people know but otherwise i'm going with a uh, Going with Distillium is a deer resistant, great evergreen plant, uh, super, super pest and disease resistant and, and drought tolerant. It definitely has a place in the landscape. Um, but like I said, on deer resistance, I'm not 100% sure on it. I'm in the middle of a big giant group of uh, Hydrangea macrophylla, which the deer will definitely, will definitely eat. Um, but in the middle of them is some uh, lemon lime nandinas and uh, obsession. Nandinas right here next to it. These are two newer varieties that are uh, really compact, uh, don't flower. They're just being grown for the uh, beautiful foliage color here. And this lemon lime stays this uh, uh, lemon color, um, new growth on it all season. And you can see what Obsession does right here next to it. Just quite striking. But these um, 
in all the years I've been in this business, I don't see, I don't remember any deer damage uh, on Nandinas. So thank you very much for watching part one of my deer resistant plant list. I think we're maybe 10 or 11 in this first video. Look for the second video in the next few days with the next uh, 10 or 11 varieties. Thanks for watching.